Now that we've defeated at least one of the Arch Demons, we can head back to the third segment of Boletarian Palace. I've taken it down to pure Black World Tendency because this is where the Primeval Demon is in the world. And when you approach the previously un impassable fog, you get this. We'll be chasing that fat official throughout the entire level, and for good reason. It turns out that he's actually the terrifying love child of Rex Ryan and Rob Ford, and such an abomination should not be suffered to live. Also, since we're doing this in pure black world tendency, and in the interest of it not taking forever and involving infinite deaths and editing, I'm going to go ahead and uh, summon some, well, summon a friend. Well, I say friend, he's going to be our friend, Mr. Ortmeier. 47. Seems pretty good. 40 multiplayer sessions, 70% S ranking. I think he'll do just fine. Of course, since I don't actually know who this is, I can't warn him ahead of time that we're playing in pure Black World Tendency, and that I haven't cleared out any of the one-time traps. I'm sure those will be fun surprises when he finds them. Of course, it still does take a while to summon somebody, but I actually think that it takes far less time in Demon Souls than it does in Dark or Dark 2. A lot of that could be because the servers aren't completely overloaded. Which makes it feel a little lonely, in a way. Uh, you might also notice the hat is back. And I think we're going to uh, discover a lot of reasons why wearing the hat all the time isn't exactly the best course of action. Now then. First challenge is dogs. Kind of a pain in the ass, but nothing we can't deal with. There's an alley back there, but we don't need to go there quite yet. That's going to be instrumental to freeing the last NPC, or rather the last uh, spell trainer NPC. That's our real goal. I mean, we do have to chase down the fat official, etc., but the thing I really need is to free the NPC from this stage. Alright, so we avoided the uh, flaming rocks. Our friend Ortmeier went ahead and got past them for us. But then, our crafty fat official friend does horrible things to his own people and locks us out of the next part of the level. That's unfortunate. So we're going to have to go to the right, which appears to be where Ortmeier's going. But first, the guy that got cut in half has a Stone of Ephemeral Eyes. Very handy. Unfortunately, I can't use it on our friend Ortmeier, who I think learned the hard way that we are in pure Black World Tendency. And uh, got pretty smashed by the first guy who came across. That's unfortunate, but uh, I don't feel any need to go back and get another friend. So the major new enemy in this stage is ninjas. There are also some red-eye knights, like the one from the very first stage. But in reality, the real thing you need to watch out for is ninjas. They are, of course, silent and deadly, and they will knife you to death. Fortunately, you can usually tell where they're going to be. Like, any time you see a small alleyway that you'd think to yourself, hey, that would be perfect for an ambush. There's probably a ninja in there somewhere. And, uh, in fact, there's our first one. I didn't even notice it was there because the gargantuan hat was in the way. It's not going to stop me from wearing it, though. This hat rules. Now, I'm actually getting kind of lost here. There, there are three paths. There's the one I came from, there's one that leads to a treasure, and there's one that leads onward. And I got kind of mixed up as to 
which one was which for a second there. Of course, there's a ladder here that we can take to move on, but I kind of didn't see it at the time. It's a bit dark. Oh, and there was a guy shooting. But now that I see it, I do, in fact, want the treasure that's over there. First things first, though. We gotta get rid of this archer. I do wish you could roll through the tables and didn't have to hit them. So, the trap is, of course, another rolling, flaming rock. Just like it was before. That one is a little harder to dodge. But, not by much. Even if we didn't have Ortmeier to trigger off that first trap for us, eh, there's no real way it was going to hit. And it does seem as though it took out one of our ninja friends because I got close enough to trigger the, uh, or to get into the ninja's aggro radius. There are, of course, two ninjas total. The one that was hit by the rock, and this one. We can see the other ninja right there. How unfortunate. But what you don't see... Well, I mean, there's that guy, but he's not really a ninja. Okay. That's not really what I expected. It's another one of those places where, you know, you can jump off of a wall or climb over something, but there's really no way to tell that you can. Really annoying, but not fatal even though it was a pretty far drop. He just kind of floated down. But it does give us a good reason to head back here and pick up this treasure. And once again, you might not think it, but you can actually climb over this railing. And just in case I land on the boulder, which can still hurt you because it is on fire, I'm going to go ahead and put on the Ring of Flame Resistance real fast both of them, even though I don't think it matters. And a double didn't matter since I completely leapt the thing. Alright. Moving on. Gotta deal with this guy who tried to drop a boulder on us. He's not so tough without his giant fiery friend. And of course, that crappy treasure in a hallway is the trigger for another ninja to appear. The Epe Rapier is very effective in these close quarters. There's no danger of clanking it off wall, like any sword with a larger swing radius. Basically because you just jab and shank people until they die. Alright. So we see, in the distance, three archers and a fat official. What we want to do is snipe these guys with Sol Ray. But it seems their lock-on distance is better than ours. Very annoying. Of course, even though these guys got killed here, they got a new job in Sinner's Rise. There we go. Now, I always wondered if it was possible to snipe the fat official, and I feel like it is, but he's a little too fast in his uh, running off for me to really take advantage of it. You'd probably need a bow that you could manually aim to take him out. And over here, we have our good friend the Red-Eye Knight. The first Red-Eye Knight, that is. Fortunately, we're much stronger than we were back in the first video. And he is quickly dealt with. Of course, that's just one of many. And boy, am I happy that that was just a regular old guy there, and not another Red-Eye Knight. Clearing out those shelves, we find a hidden passage. And at the top... Hope you find some. Is that same dreggling merchant 
who has been following us around throughout each stage. His selection still sucks, but I don't really want him to complain, so I'll buy one half moon grass. Makes for a nice even 20. Actually, one thing that annoys me even more than NPCs being ungracious is... Odd numbers of healing items. Maybe not all odd numbers. Fives are okay. Zeros and fives. That's what I like. Alright. Time to move on through the first fog gate, where there's another friend waiting for us. Oh look, another red-eye knight patrolling the hallway. He actually really does patrol, he walks back and forth. So if you step in when he's facing away, you can get a free shot in on him. And then while he's turning, you can get another one and easily take him out. The horde of foes ahead, well, the first part of it's been taken care of. It would have been bad juju if we left those archers alive. That means that we can take on the fat official on our own pace. And he's made the mistake of ceasing his fiery assault. And it has led to his downfall. He drops the Iron Ring of Keys, which we need to take back to the room right outside of uh, the Tower Knight's boss area, back in the previous segment of the stage. There's a locked door there that we can unlock with this set of keys. It also unlocks the prison cells therein and lets us free another NPC, though not one that we need really after this stage. By unlocking him, we'll bring a uh, helper with us to the boss which will basically drag the boss's attention away and let us beat it easily. And I tried for a parry there, but the timing's way harder when you can't really see what you're parrying. Alright. I'm pretty sure you have enough healing items for the rest of the game at this point, and there's really actually not that much game left. After this stage, there's one more real stage, which is the final one. And, uh, there's a bunch of interesting boss fights. But other than that, we're just about done. Now, I've never used the Flambeirge. Let me think about that for a second. But I have strong doubts that it's better than my Epe Rapier, which is now upgraded to plus three with some of the colorless demon souls I already had. By my count, assuming I get the colorless demon soul from this primeval demon, I will have just enough to fully upgrade the Chris knife with one left over to get the Epe Rapier to plus four. And that should be pretty good. That's not a bad haul. But I mean, I'd have to be really bad to fall into that flaming rock trap right there. It's, Or maybe unattentive, since there are a lot of enemies before, you might not be paying attention to such things and fall for basically a dummy trap. Now we gotta be careful again with these tight corridors. It would be wise for me to switch back over to the Epe Rapier, but I can also achieve much the same effect with my magic. This guy's just wandering around, he doesn't even know I'm there. Thank you, Thieves Ring, for continuing to be awesome. He probably noticed me in the end, but I couldn't see him through the hat. Alright. There are more archers up there than I remember, but I'm pretty sure none of them are there because of the pure black tendency. The only enemies that get added, to my knowledge, are the Black Phantom enemies. These guys simply don't compare. I'd say we're reaching about the halfway point of the stage. Pretty soon we'll be able to unlock that gate from the start and create a shortcut back to the beginning.
But first, we'll have to deal with this guy, a Black Phantom Fat Official. Oh, and this guy. 